Thank you, guys. Um, so it's, very, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, uh, I was the founder of a company called Zenedge, and my company was acquired by Oracle five months ago. Uh, so it's a double pleasure to be here and to be able to speak to this fantastic audience. Um, I want to talk to you about you versus the internet. And as it's true, I did change some of these slides um, because I wanted to show you some latest result of cybersecurity attacks that we have identified in the past few days. Um, so, anatomy of an attack. Here is what happened. This was in July of this year, so three months ago. An ISP in Indonesia started to advertise five IP blocks that do not belong to them. Advertise five IP blocks means that temporarily for the internet, it looks like all the machines that are that belong to these IP addresses, belong to this ISP. So all the traffic that normally goes to Q9 networks in Canada was going for 30 minutes to that ISP in Indonesia. Something very weird was happening. And it didn't happen only once, it actually happened a few times. This is just an example of it. it happened a few times over a few days. Um, the second hijack was done by Extreme, or was a hack inside Extreme Broadband, which is another ISP in Malaysia, for the same IP blocks. So something weird is happening. For these 30 minutes to a few hours, the entire traffic that normally goes, let's say, to some machines in Q9 in Canada, is now being redirected entirely into some obscure cloud services in Indonesia or Malaysia. Um, unfortunately, one of these IP was used by a financial institution, a very large payment gateway that is used by a lot of e-commerce companies. This financial institution was using this IP as their DNS server. So what happened there is any traffic going to the payment gateway of that financial institution that is normally hosted in Q9 in Canada the traffic to that DNS is being redirected to a server in Indonesia and then in Malaysia. Because it's a DNS server, the resolver of that query point the site of the payment gateway to a different location. And that was the IP address that was used. And in fr at first, we thought this was in Curaçao, and then we find out that this machine was in Ukraine, in Luhansk, in East Ukraine. So here's what happened during this attack. Anybody going to an e-commerce company, making a payment, using that financial institution as a payment gateway, would instead receive a site that looks like the payment gateway of that financial institution. But in fact, instead of sending your credit card number to that financial company, you were giving this away to a team of hackers in the Ukraine. The only way to find this out is if you ensure that all your applications are effectively, all the DNS resolver of your applications are effectively pointing to your application and not someone else. Um, this happened five times since then. The first attack was in April to Amazon, and there was a few attacks on the 6th of July. We, we think that this is just uh, the beginning of a new type of DNS hijacking. Uh, of course, Q9 network in Canada noticed it after a few, uh, some time, and they started to re-advertise the IP. They started to say to the internet, hey, these five blocks that people thought were in Indonesia, they are not in Indonesia, and they are in Canada. Please send us back the traffic. But the hackers were very smart. They did a TTL, a time to leave on their DNS query of five hours. So if you're a consumer and you keep going back to that e-commerce company to buy stuff for five hours, you are going to be redirected to a server in the Ukraine. So these are the kind of things we see online. I have a few more examples of uh, th similar things. So another uh, customer of us, this is um, uh, it's a fantastic customer. It's uh, a place where you go online, and if you want to see all the dentists in New York, you go online, you type the word dentist, you press enter, you say, <laughs> and you receive the list of dentists in New York, and you can call them or book an appointment. Um, this is a very useful tool. It's been used by a lot of 
uh, companies all over the world, uh, so you, you, and, and humans and, and users as well, so you can see all the dentists in New York when you're looking for this. Here is the normal traffic of that website. So it's normal at night, nobody's using it, um, and then uh, when the day starts, um, we start to look for dentists during the day, we take some lunch, it comes back in the afternoon, and then it dies at night. This is a typical uh, graph of uh, internet traffic. However, you may notice something at 2 and 4 a.m. This is lo local time um, in, in Europe, so this is uh, midday here in New York. Between 2 and 4 a.m., there is a small increase of traffic you see in the green in the bottom line. And this started to puzzle us, and we looked at it. This was, in fact, traffic that was blocked by some of the most sophisticated bot management tools that we have. This is a real customer. This is real data. Uh, between 2 a.m., oh, sorry, between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. that day, there is a huge amount of requests that our machine says, hey, these are not human requests. They look like bot requests. And so this puzzled us a little bit, and we started to look at what is this, where they come from, and what is the purpose of this. So the first thing we do is, well, how many IPs are the bad guys using? And the answer is too many, meaning so many that are spread everywhere that you actually cannot have any this can get, cannot give you any information on who are the bad guys. They are using a very sophisticated, very spread uh, botnet. There was more than 500 of these. We also looked at the, some of the more traditional way of identif identifying bots. And you see between 4 and 6 a.m., there is no increase of traffic here. Here is our bot manager using simpler uh, bot detection. Uh, simpler means, um, are you using Chrome, are you using Safari, are you using Edge or Internet Explorer? And if the answer is no, you're probably not human, you're probably a bot. These bots were very sophisticated because they were using some uh, techniques that were simulating very, very well what the end-user machines would be. The only way we were able to identify these guys is by using some um, bot detection that are linked to the user behavior. And in fact, we look at what these guys were doing. They were, <laughs> they were uh, going to the site. They were looking for dentists in New York. The only thing they would do is click Next. This was a crawler. They were stealing our customer information. That's the only thing they were, they were doing. Uh, I have more examples. This is an airline. I'll go faster on this one. This is a brochure aware of the airline. This is also a real customer of us. Um, this is where you put your city pair, you want to fly from Singapore to Hong Kong, you press OK, and then you go to the booking site, which is this one. For the user, this looks the same, it's the same application. Well, unfortunately, the first one, the brochure where, is in Hong Kong, soft layer. The booking site is in Sydney AWS. Sydney AWS had a very weak application security or application firewall. The Hong Kong one has great one. The Sydney one did not. The Sydney one is where you book and put your credit card number. This is an example of what the bad guys were doing. They were crawling the booking site, looking for pricing of city pair. It's a crawler again. It's called data intelligence. They are stealing pricing of city pairs so they can sell this again to, their, to the competition of this airline. This, so in, this is a rare case where we quote-unquote, hack the hackers, meaning we went into the hacker site. They were based in, in the Czech Republic. This site, the hackers should need some cybersecurity system because they didn't have any password to their machines. And we actually found, we found this file. This file was not from our client, but this, <laughs> this file was still stolen by the hackers. This is pricing for a steep air between Lisbon and uh, Budapest in 2013. So this is, these were real bad guys stealing public information for the purpose of reselling that information or that intelligence to other airlines. Then uh, my last example is one of my favorite ones. Sometimes there are outages, but not always. This is a country that had three outages in June. This is a zoom of one day of the outage. The entire country was off for two hours. Well, it was not an outage. It, the country is Syria, and they blocked the internet of the whole place for two hours because there was an 
an exam that day, and they didn't want high school students to look online for the answers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so our job is sometimes funny. We think, oh my god, there's an attack. There's no attack. This is just something that the country did. The same thing happened in Iraq the same week. And the last one is one of my favorite. The entire internet of one country in Asia normally use access from China and from Russia, as you can see here. At 12, on June 11, that country decided to receive internet access only for Russia. June 11, the country is North Korea. June 11 is when Kim Jong-il met the President Trump in Singapore. June 11 is also the day where we started to see a lot of small attacks coming from Russia to Singapore. And they were looking at government uh, assets. Well, we don't take any conclusion here, we're not sure <laughs> of this, but it is a weird thing to say that the same day as the leader of two countries are meeting in Singapore, the entire internet of that country is being served from a Russian ISP, and there are a lot of Russian attacks coming to Singapore June 11. So these are <laughs> kind of things we see uh, from time to time. We see a lot more, of course. Um, if you want more stories, please visit us at our booth. And um, almost all of the examples I show you here, uh, there exists a lot of solutions and platforms that handle this, that detect these attacks, that mitigate them. We're not the only one that do this, uh, but we do it very, very well, because these were my products. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, and uh, we have also a lot of colleagues in this room that do this uh, very well as well. So thank you very much for your time.